what is good everybody man welcome back into the blue bloods man another interview i've been looking to do for a long time one of my personal favorite players in fcs football my guy colton adams alabama state linebacker last season 128 total tackles earned first team all conference honors in the swag was a blue bloods fcs all american and a hero sports sophomore all american selection man colton appreciate you hopping on the show Oh, yeah. Thank you for having me. You were an all-metro, all-state selection at Wetumpka High School coming out of Alabama, man. I want to go back to your recruiting process because you had all the accolades, the stats, the production. What was your recruiting process like coming out of high school? Um, I think I ended up with, you know, maybe 10, 11 offers, you know, small offers, and um, kind of narrowed it down to a final three schools. Uh, a couple of schools, they kind of turned their heads away from me because they – I wasn't a legit 6'2", 6'3", back in high school, so um, they didn't think that I had the size, but you know everything worked out the way it was supposed to. So, What was it about Alabama State that, for you, separated themselves from some of the other schools that you were considering in your recruitment? Um, I had my final three down to, I think, Tuskegee, um, Gardner-Webb, and Alabama State, and um, Coach Gresham, um, Coach Pierce, and Coach Creamer. Um, some people from the old staff and Coach Gresham still on the staff. Uh, you know, they just treated me like family. I came to the 2018, um, was it Turkey Day Classic, when they played ski, and I loved the culture, you know, the atmosphere of the games. And, you know, they made everything feel like um, like home. And I'm a homebody. It's 20, 25 minutes away from home. So, you know, it just made the decision even easier to pick Alabama State. You were able to come in immediately, see the field early, be a big contributor for the Hornets, but you had a preseason injury your freshman year. Then coming into the next season, you missed part of the year with an injury as well. For you, what has been the biggest thing off the field in terms of, of overcoming those injuries and still being super successful on the field? Um, I definitely would feel like, you know, um, you get down with the injuries and I've had um, back-to-back injuries and just overcoming, you know, I've had a um, – Probably, probably my mentor, Coach James, on the team now, uh, you know, he kind of helped me overcome, you know, just having the mindset that you're going to get through the game, you know, take one one day at a time and get through each game at a time. And it just was um, – I was able to play a full season this past year. I'm um, thanking the good Lord that I didn't get hurt. So I'm just con- trying to continue to build on, on top of that season. I know it was a big year. We'll get to that in just one second, man. But I want to talk a little bit about the coaching change after the 2021 season. We, we, You guys go and hire Eddie Robinson Jr. For you, just personally, how difficult was the transition between coaches after the 2021 season? Um, I wouldn't say it was difficult. You know, um, coming in, the coaches, I didn't play the spring. Um, after Coach Eden, all of them were gone. Um, we got them that spring, and I was still coming off of injury, so I wasn't even cleared yet. So I think, you know, they were still trying to take a gamble on me to see, you know, was I going to be able to play. And um, luckily I still had Coach Gresh, you know, he had my full support of, you know, um, believing in me of what I can do. And so I think, you know, especially um, Coach Robinson being able to play linebacker, you know, it's kind of showed me the ins and outs of, you know, what I need to um, do to improve my game. So I really um, – I'm really glad that we got, you know, the new coaching staff, and I think they've turned out about the way um, into a good way. You had your first fully healthy season, got to play pretty much the whole year, and you have an FCS All-America season, all-conference, sophomore All-American, all the honors that came with it. What clicked for you this season? Um, I would just go back to, you know, taking every day, you know, one step out of time, you know, um, multiple injuries that's leaving me, you know. I think um, 2021 I played seven plays, made it through camp and played seven plays. So, you know, just taking a step back and, you know, realizing what you got to do to keep your body healthy and just taking every day and every game out of getting through. My biggest um, thing this past season was just making it through each game, you know, game one down, game two down. And I really think that helped me um, improve my mindset about, you know, not getting hurt in, in, in the games and everything else. Last season, I feel like you guys had one of the most talented defenses in the country. Yourself, my guy Nelson, man. Nelson Jordan is my guy, man. He, he's hilarious. And you also had Brandon Gaddy. I got to meet him down at the Legacy Bowl. What a personality, man. I've never seen a dude be able to do so many backflips after practice. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But then <clears throat> you also have Keenan Isaac. You also have Adrian Maddox, FCS freshman All-American. If you had to describe that defense in one word, what would you use? Um, I would say dominance. You know, I feel like we had guys at every position, you know, I feel like, you know, we were a couple plays from being 11 and one. I think we finished six and five, but 
we definitely had an eleven and one team last year, and we just fell short on a couple games. So, but yeah, our our defense was dominant. I mean, all the numbers show. I think we had Texas State had the number one, but we were number two. I think we were sixteen in FCS. So, I mean, we were just dominant. When I think if you're not from the state of Alabama, you don't understand how big the Magic City Classic really is and how important it is. You guys went into that game, a losing streak. A lot of people were talking about is Connell Maynard A&M going to get another one. You guys go and win that game. You're the MVP, the defensive MVP in that game. One, what did it mean to you to just win the game? And then two, how special was it for you to be the MVP of that game? You know, I think that's a, um, that game is a, it's a legendary classic and, I think we lost three in a row my freshman year. We went to three overtimes, ended up losing the third overtime. So just to be able to, you know, say that we won the Classic and I was um, blessed enough to win the MVP, I mean, there's no value on that. I think the biggest difference when I talk to players is from high school to college is not just the speed of the game, but film study, how more in depth you have to get, how dedicated you have to be in the just off the field for you. When I look at your game and you're so instinctive in terms of always being in the right spot at the right time, you don't have 130 tackles not being prepared for you. What is your film study routine like? Um, You know, I feel like during the season and if I got downtime, um, luckily, you know, today's world, we have the DV3 um, 360 on our phone. So anytime I got downtime, I mean, it's so quick. And, I mean, you almost have to be just super lazy not to apply yourself. And, I mean, it's the world's at your hands to be able to watch film. So that's what I feel like even in high school, you know, I took the time to study the game, just try to, you know, get that edge on your on your team that you're playing. You talked a little bit about – Eddie Robinson Jr. being in, you know, being in the NFL, having experience at linebacker. What is he like behind the scenes, man? We he we we saw the press conferences. We see him in, we see him when he's in the media, man. How personable he can be, how funny, how intense he can be at times for you. What is he like with the team behind the scenes? Um, Coach E. Rom, he's my guy. He, he'll cut up with you, but um, you also know when he can turn it on and and flip that switch. So, but he's he's really. I feel like he's really improved. You know, he's kind of flipped our, you know, the culture that we've had at Alabama State around for in, in a better way. How? Because I think different head coaches say different approaches. Just a quick follow up, man. How hands on is he with the defense, or does he take more of a CEO role? Um, I feel like he does both. You know, he's still, you know, he didn't play ten years or eleven years in the league for for nothing. So anytime, um, he definitely sits back and watch. But if he's got something on his mind he's going to let you know. And I feel like he does a good job of, you know, if he sees something immediately go in and, you know, let you know what you could have done better. Coach Ryan Lewis Jr. comes in with, with, with coach E Rob to be the defensive coordinator linebackers coach. What is your relationship been like with him over from last season to now? Um, coach Lewis is probably one of my favorite coaches on the team. Um, me and him have a really close relationship. Um, especially, you know, he played, <clears throat> He played linebacker at Bethune. Was a, I think he was an All American. I mean, we we've, we've turned on his film and watched some of his highlights. So, um, Coach Lewis is definitely one of my favorite coaches. And um, Coach Pearson, our old defense coordinator, and he played safety. Coach Lewis played mm-hmm. linebacker. So you know he kind of builds the defense around for his linebackers. So I mean, he coaches the um, the Hornets, the nickel backs, but um, he built he built the defense for linebackers. So. Man, this upcoming season, you have really – you're going to be the guy when you look around the locker room, the the older guy, the guy who's been around the program everyone's going to look to. How have you prepared yourself to step into that leadership role for Alabama State this season? Um, I definitely take, you know, take pride of uh, – I'm more of a nonverbal leader, lead by example. But, you know, I feel like if something that's I got to improve on, you know, try to go to the next level is be a more vocal leader, you know, and um, – you know, if, if, if I think something, you know, let it fly out and not hold it back and keep to myself. And that's how I usually am. I'm just, you know, lead by example guy, but I need to be more verbal. And that's something that I've been working on. You know, that's going to take for us to win the Sway Championship. This is your, fi- this is this is probably going to be one of your final seasons at Alabama State, man. What is the importance to you personally of winning that SWAC championship, man, before you graduate? Um, to leave a banner, you know, they can take so much away from you, but. Um, you look in the stadium right now, if you have that banner, they cannot take that away from you. So, you know, um, just leaving a legacy um, at Alabama State. I think when I look at just you, man, I, I want to, I'm so interested in this question because I want to take 
you to go back to fresh, true freshman year Colton Adams and compare him to the guy I'm talking to now, what's the single biggest developmental change that you've seen in your game? Um, I feel like my freshman year, you know, I was more just, you know, straight downhill. I feel like I kind of, you know, opened up out of my inventory, you know, um, the new defense we had, I had to kind of go out of the box. And I feel like, you know, that's kind of improved my game. And that's something I've been working on this off season. Looking just at next season, outside of the SWAC championship, what are your personal goals? You have the FCS All-American. You have the All-Conference. What does Colton Adams want to achieve in his final season? Um, I want to be the next guy from Alabama State to get drafted. You know, I feel like um, that's the main goal, and that's what, that's what I'm working forward in. But um, none of that happens if we don't win. So uh, none of the single season accolades, none of that matters if your team doesn't win. So. Mm, man, I love it. Like shifting to some quick hitters for you, man. When you look at your game, is there a current or former NFL player that you feel like your game models the most? Um, I try to model my game after um, Luke Keekley and Ray Lewis. I feel like those are, you know, you look at back at the the um, thirty for thirties when they talk about Luke Keekley. You know, he knew the plays before. He's calling it out. He's, he's a great um, guy that studies all the film. So, you know, those two guys that I, I grew up watching and two of my favorite players. Going back probably to your true freshman year, what was your welcome to college moment, man, when you knew this was going to be different at the collegiate level? I would say uh, day one of summer workouts, I think we ran either, I think it was 36 110s, and I was like, I'm in a rude awakening. I don't think people, because a lot of people watch the show are from the South, but people who are not from, especially the state of Alabama, when you have to run those 110s in that summer heat, it's different. It is yep. so different. Oh, man. I got nightmares about that, man. I mean, being in shape, running on your own is is way different than college shape, you know, prime, summer, summer run. So. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to have nightmares about that tonight, man. But look at just at your game. I, listen, linebacker is an intense position. How much – how how big of a – how big is trash talking a part of your game in between those white lines? Um. I try not to do so much, but, you know, in the heat of the moment, you know, sometimes it just flies out. So, but part of the game. So, I mean, you still got to respect your opponent. But, I mean, in the heat of the battle, some stuff comes out. <laughs> we, we we had Adrian and, and Nelson on the show, and I, their answers were the same. So, I got a feeling where this is going, man. If you look at last season, who was the biggest trash talker on the defense last year? Um, ooh, Probably. I don't know. Gaddy was probably a big trash talker. Um, Shaw, we had we had some we had some guys on defense. So, especially uh, let's see, Ogletree. I can't forget about him. Um, Bellamy. Yeah, we had we had a bunch of guys that that let you hear it. <laughs> Man, I, that's what Nelson said the same thing. He was like, man, there were some good ones, but he was like, Gaddy, he was like, I don't know if you ever, he ever heard Gaddy stop talking trash during the game. He was like, man, that, he was like, he would go at people, man, but without giving away too much, man, one-on-one -on -one in the hole, what's the number one mistake a running back can make against you? Um, I feel like, you know, just trying to lower the bucket and, and run me over. I feel like that's, that's something they don't want to do. Uh, I had a feeling that's where it was going, man. Look at just looking at your game. Defenses, especially today, have become so multiple in the different schemes they've run. For you, what's your favorite defensive scheme to play in? Um, I love what we're running now. The four-two-five um, kind of lets me, you know, flow fast. Um, you know, and Coach Lewis does a really good job of building. You know, he built the defense for for us. I mean, the linebackers are supposed to make the plays. Um, so I think what we're running now, four-two-five, is is really good. Allows me to flow fast. You know. Play hard nose, but you know you still have help from both sides. I know the answer probably would be the Magic City Classic this past year. So excluding that one, what's the most memorable game of your career thus far? Um, I would probably say um, it definitely you know the experience of playing the Rose Bowl this past year. But you know just going back to my freshman year um, versus Alcorn, I think that was week four, week four or five. Um, just being able to play that you know start as a true freshman um, and just experience you know your first collegiate start. So that's something I'll never forget. Was that a home game or did you guys have to go play in yeah. the woods in Lorman? It was at, um, it was at home. Uh, newcomer of the week that week, maybe, but uh, we ended, I think we ended up losing, but it was still, you know, a game you won't, you won't forget, you know, be able to start your, you know, your first true freshman. So. I can only imagine, man. So looking just at your career, who are one or two of the best offensive players you've ever had to play against? 
Mm. Uh, uh, Quill Glass, he was pretty good. Um, dang, and they had a really good running back my freshman year. Also, uh, the running back was it Duffy? Was he quarterback or running back at Alcorn? He was a running back. Um, he was he was pretty good. Uh, let's see who else. Um, Sivion Wilkerson, um, both running backs. Um, um, at Jackson and the guy at um, Pine Bluff this past year, both of them mm-hmm. are really good. So looking forward to this season, man. Is there a game on the schedule that you have circled as a statement game for you? Um, I wouldn't say a statement game. I just feel like you know, for us to as a team to you know accomplish what we want to accomplish, it's every um game in our conference on, on our side of the conference. You know, we have to go in um and no leave no doubt in the field and just you know have to dominate every game because if we want to make it to that spike championship, I feel like um we have to we can't afford to lose. Um, not one game, but especially not any game on our side of the conference. Man, that that is a fact. Those divisional games are are especially going to be important in a loaded East division this year. Man, looking shifting toward the NFL draft, man. The final two questions will center around that. First off, if an NFL franchise asks you what they're going to get in Colton Adams if they select you in the upcoming NFL draft, what do you tell them? Um, I'd say you know a, a leader. The guys will show up on time. Um, probably one of the hardest working guys. Um, that they'll find, you know, just someone that's going to do um, what it takes to win. And um, no matter what, if it takes the special teams, defense, um, whatever it takes to get on the field, I'm, I'm willing to play. And looking back through your career, man, you get to Alabama State, you overcome injuries, your first full season, earn FCS All-American honors, man. When you look at just your overall career, what would it mean to you to hear your name called as the next great Alabama State player to be selected in the NFL draft? Um, it'd mean the world to me, you know, that's what, you know, one of my lifelong dreams, you know, everything that I've worked for up until this point, you know, is to be, um, the next person drafted from Alabama state. Man, I, I'm no, I'm rooting for you. I know a lot of people listening to the show are as well, but Colton, man, I appreciate you so much for hopping on the show, man. Let people know where they can find you on social media, contact you for NIL, man, all that good stuff. Um, Colton underscore Adams 23 on Twitter and CM Adams 10 on Instagram. Man, I appreciate you so much. Real quick, because someone asked me, and I, I I don't know why they thought I would know. How did the nickname Bubba come about? Um, when I was younger, so I have, a old, I have two older siblings and a younger brother. Um, when I was um, younger, my older brother couldn't say my real name, Colton. Uh, so he started calling me Bubba. And, I mean, I don't know if anyone calls me Colton, really. I mean, that's <laughs> when I introduced myself, you know, it's kind of just stuck with me. Uh, I know it's an old country Bubba, but, um, you know, that's what I go by. And, so I'm proud of it. Legendary nickname, man. I appreciate you so much, guys. Make sure to go follow Bubba on all social media, man, and stay tuned for more content right here on the Blue Bloods. But for Bubba, for myself, and for the Blue Bloods, man, we are out for right now.